<clears throat> Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast, <laughs> where I have another one of my great friends, Steve Forbes, in the house this afternoon. Steve took the Wake Forest Demon Deacons to a 25 and 10 record last season. They were 13 and 7, good for fifth in the ACC. And, uh, you know, they went deep into the NIT, the final eight in Coach Forbes' rebuild. Although I'm going to go out and say it because I can, and he don't, you know. But the Demon Deacons got robbed out of an NCAA bid. Coach Forbes, it's always a pleasure. Well, Ken, it's great to see your smiling face. I know it's been a, <sighs> a trying months, you know, uh, before, you know, up after your accident. But we're glad you're back and ready to roll. And um, I think I was the first one to do this with you many, many years ago. One of the you first. Were. And yeah. so um, great to be back. And glad you're feeling better, and you got to. You look actually, you know, you probably look better than what you looked before you went on. <laughs> it. But that's, that's sometimes that that's happens, good. right? Sometimes start, that happens. Start taking care of yourself a little bit better. But, Had uh, to, you know. Anyway, I'm glad to see you back, and uh, look forward to talking to you about our new team. Yeah, new team. It always seems like every year now in college basketball, we got new teams. I know you improved by 19 games between your first and second years. You don't see that just everywhere and anywhere, but you had two key players, Alondis Williams and Jake LaRavia was a first-round draft pick in the NBA. Uh, talk about the impact those two players had mm -hmm. and how their improvement has allowed them to get to the next level. I think Jake and uh, Linus are great examples of two young men uh, choosing a school for the right reason. Mm -hmm. um, they came here for the uh, number one, the opportunity. And we, you know, they had the opportunity to play a lot of minutes and mm -hmm. then play in a style of play that fit them. You mm -hmm. know, I think sometimes kids don't go for the right reasons. And um, those guys really kind of made a, the decision was best for them when it came to how much playing time they were going to get. And then how they were going to be used. And we mm -hmm. had a vision for them, and it worked. Now, they did all the work. We put them sure. in position. But, you know, a year ago, if you'd have asked me today, if I would have told you today, hey, uh, Linus is going to be the player of the year in the ACC, and Jake's going to be a first-round draft choice, you probably would have looked at me a little funny, and rightfully so. That's why I didn't say it, because I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, but they played their way. With that, they – um ignited reignited our fan base along mm -hmm. with isaiah mucius and and dallas walton hadim c who are not here anymore um you know graduated those guys they were they were really they were awesome to coach they had a great year they won 25 games like you said 13 in the league um yeah unfortunately we didn't make the tournament uh went to the nit beat tiles and beat bcu lost to a&m mm -hmm. but um Re, you know, just re-energized our program with our fan base, and we needed that, and uh, we'll always uh, be indebted to them for that. Yeah, that's it's great. It's great to hear that uh, the Damon Deacon fans are back in the house, so to speak. Well, hey, Dave, you know, they love basketball here, and, and sure. they just wanted, to, you know, they. But to come to the games, you gotta gotta give them a reason, you know, give mm -hmm. them some hope, um, something they're proud of. This that team was um, not only a really good team, but they shared the ball. They had great chemistry. Like mm -hmm. the majority of the teams I've coached in the past, I've always had you know really truthfully good chemistry, and so you could see that that they liked each other, they cared about yeah. each other, and that I think that um, permeated to our uh, to our fan base. Sure, and, and Davion Williamson's back on yeah. the point. You know your lone returning starter. He's a really good finisher. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's turned into a consistent shooter. Damien's a really good player, Ken. Um, unfortunately for him, it's cruel and unusual punishment because he's played for me for five years. He's the only player to probably ever do that, probably ever will uh, <laughs> in this day and age. But um, yeah. what a wonderful uh, young man and a great player. And his numbers are off the charts. You know, he uh, he shot 51% from the field last year, 44 from three, 84 from the line. Yeah, a positive assist turnover ratio. I mean, I don't know what more you could ask for. Um, he's got mm -hmm. over a thousand points in his career. Uh, mm -hmm. combined from a couple years at ETSU with me and then a couple years here with me at Wake. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. You know, he's showing great leadership. He's gotten a lot stronger. Uh, he weighs over 170 pounds. Now he came to me at 148. And so uh, just looking forward to him having a really, a really another great year, another special senior year or COVID senior year for me, I guess you would call it here yeah. at Epic Forest. Yeah, and then Damari Monsanto uh, was a was a buccaneer for for a minute. I think he shot thirty nine point five percent for you last year from three. Yeah, uh, and and he returned from an ACL injury. Uh, actually, Ken, it was it was an Achilles. Um, Achilles, okay. Which, um, you know they're both tough, but that one the Achilles might be tougher. And he's the only player I've ever coached that had an Achilles in the sun in the early summer and played that year that I thought he was going to be out for the year. That's what they told me. Yeah. He tore it in May, but he came back in January mm-hmm. and he, uh, you know, he played pretty well. He, he had a big three, he made three threes in a row, three straight possessions against uh, North Carolina kind of opened up the game for us. Um, mm-hmm. But now, but he, he obviously with an Achilles, he couldn't do anything conditioning wise or so he was at two thirty. you know, he was just, he just, couldn't really get himself into shape. It was just based on the injury. He's down to 205 right now, which is incredible. Sure. Um, he's shooting the ball really well. He didn't have a great summer, but he's had a really good fall. And I'm looking forward to him uh, having doing some some big things this year. Yeah, yeah. Cameron Hildreth, uh, you know, it's a, it's another British player on your team who who will work. Uh, and he's a steady player. He feels like on both ends of the floor. You're right on it. Cam's had a really good uh, summer and fall. He's really improved his shooting. He's a tough, one of the, probably the toughest kid on the team. Uh, mm-hmm. Competitor. Comes from a coaching family. His dad plays, dad coached. Uh, sure. Still. Um, Cam had a really good scrimmage on Saturday. He had 22 points and a half. Uh, mm-hmm. He could play in. He can shoot it better. Um, you know, mm-hmm. he shot you know, he only shot 18% from three last year, but that will get better this year. Um, he's a creator off the dribble. He can get in the lane. He's got good size. He's gotten stronger. It's in mm-hmm. great shape. I think uh I, I I expect him to take a big step forward this year, too. Cool. Uh and another another guard that I watched in Florida when I was covering the Gators down there before the accident uh, is Tyree Appleby. And I really like him. I like his style. And I'm just curious how he's fitting in on the perimeter for you right now. Well, he's, he's fitting in seamlessly. He, um, he's captain, him and Davey, mm-hmm. Carr and mm-hmm. Atuka. Um, he's just a really competitive kid and uh, mm-hmm. fun to be around. Can mm-hmm. score in bunches. Um, you know, last year at Florida, Kansas, you know, he averaged almost you know, 11 a game. He had mm-hmm. 70, in the, and this is in league play. I just you know, had 73 assists in league play at 80, shot 82% from the line. Right now in our scrimmages, and you know, we've gone twice with officials, yeah. he's got 20 assists and six turnovers. It's great. Sure. He's got 53% from three. The other, yesterday we had media day in Charlotte. Now you probably remember this back in the eight. I don't remember if it was the eighties or. South Alabama had those two guards, peanut butter and jelly. Yes. I told the media yesterday that Ty and Davian were crustables. Uh, <laughs> that's new peanut butter and jelly for this generation is crustables. So, you know, Davian scored over a thousand. Ty scored way over a thousand mm-hmm. already in his career. So uh, they're they're not the biggest guys in the world, but they have big heart, big competitors, fast. Um, and can score the ball. So they'll be fun for our fans to watch. Yeah, and, and you got three other transfers with Davion Bradford from Kansas State. As a leader, talk about these three kids and how yeah. they're fit. Well, Andrew Carr had the best summer of all of them. Delaware, right? Yeah, he's six ten and a half, cerebral player, uh, can bounce it, can shoot from three, starter, really good Delaware team. Um you know, had 14 in the NCAA tournament against Villanova. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think he's somebody who's got tremendous upside to him, and I think he's going to get yeah. better and better during his career here at Wake. Um, and uh, we're going to run a lot of stuff through him. I think he's a really good player. Jao Ituka was the freshman of the year in the league at, when he played at, last year at Marist. He averaged 16 a game. He's a, he's a very violent downhill driver. 
Well, he can get to that paint on about on anybody. Great body. Now he's leaned it up. Came in here, 220s down to 205. Faster, quicker, but still mm -hmm. strong. Um, he didn't have a great assist turnover ratio at Marist, and that was something I've I've been pounding on him. Um, right now in the in the um, scrimmages, he's got 16 assists and eight turnovers. Okay. Uh, nine for 11 from the line on Saturday. So he gets to the line. A uh, good player. Davion Bradford came from Kansas State. Had a really good freshman year, Ken. Yeah. Last year, took a step back. Um, had COVID, had pneumonia, just had a bunch of stuff. And yeah. came in here, um, you know, out of shape. And um, But I'll, I'll tell you this, to his credit now, uh, last Friday, he had lost 40 pounds, okay? Awesome. So he is in – he's gotten himself back to where he can play at an elite level. And, you know, he's got a – He's got ways to go, but he's 6'10", like today, 258. Um, just a, just got a chance, you know. He's got to rebound the ball better, but he will. And um, but, but I, I think he's got a chance to be a good player. Yeah, and you got a pair of freshman posts in yeah. Zach Keller, Bobby uh, Clinton. Both of these guys were like in the top 175, I think. It, it, probably a little higher than that. Um, yeah. you know, Zach was in the top 100. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Bobby could be top 100, top 120. Depends what you look at. Bobby's a guard. You know, that's yeah. – Bobby's a 6'9". Six, 6'9", nine, six, nine guard. Okay. Three, four. He's a good player. Now, he didn't – he wasn't here this summer. Um, he played for Sweden in the FIBA 120s and made the all-tournament team. Had a really mm -hmm. good summer. He's played really well for us. So mm -hmm. far, Zach Keller, same way. Now he could pick and pop at the five, at the four, six ten, or six nine and a half, six ten. Uh, aggressive, rugged rebounder, good player. He's going to be a really good player. Um, mm -hmm. Those guys, you know, we, 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 you can. Last year we we got older in the portal. This year we got younger. Mm -hmm. and, you know, intentional to to mm -hmm. try to you know have a base to our program, and so I'm really excited. You know, Matthew Marsh is back. You know, he didn't play a ton last year because actually got a concussion early in the fall and it's kind of held him out. But, uh, you know, he's seven foot, 250. He's mm -hmm. a big kid. Robert – or Lucas Taylor's had a really good summer and fall. I think he's going to play a lot. Robert McCrave has got tremendous athleticism. He's just got to get it into the game and take care of the ball. But he's shown signs of helping the team. So, you know, we got a good 12. But uh, mm -hmm. we're getting to the point that we're going to have to start figuring out playing time and all that here pretty soon. Hey, Coach, as much transition as there is right now from year to year, do you find yourself having, you know, having to change attacks in the way you, you know, maybe maybe a little from your philosophy now? Yeah, I mean, I think you stay true to your identity and your core values, but as far yeah. as how you coach your team and – and what you emphasize, I think that depends on your personnel. Yeah. You know, at least that's how I've always done it. And so, yeah, we're a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Last year, we were big. And yeah. I like playing big, but this year, we're a little bit smaller. So maybe we got to pick up pressure a little bit more full court. Um, we might do some combination things and defensively in the half court. Maybe we play some triangle too. Maybe we play some deny a couple guys, leave the other three alone. I mean, we'll figure it out, but. Yeah, I think each year you 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 got to tweak to your system. You stay true to your system of play. We're going to run motion. We're going to play mostly man. Um, those aren't going to change. Um, you know, like I said, we know who we are. We have our core values. But then from there, you know, you tweak your you tweak what you're doing to try to give your kids, your players, put them in position to win. Last thing, Coach. Uh, just curious about your. Uh vision kind of the state of college basketball with the transfer portal and the NIL being such hot topics. Yeah. Well, the transfer portal, you know, that's not going away. And, and unfortunately it, it just doesn't help kids be patient anymore. You know, I, when I was at Easton, just not that long ago at East Tennessee state, I always registered two, maybe three guys. And those sure. guys were always a lot better for doing it. And they played, or started the year after they, you know, came off redshirt. Guys just really aren't 
going to do that anymore, I don't think. And then mm -hmm. it takes away from the grad transfer pool because mm -hmm. really a lot of the grad transfers were guys that redshirted mm -hmm. and so they had an extra year. And so now we're not going to see as much of that. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, it's an unnerving deal in the spring when you don't know who can come back, who's going to come back. Those guys mm -hmm. can just automatically go and and play somewhere else. And so it does um, – it does bring some anxiety, but I mean, either it's adapt or, or not. And, and so you got to adapt with the NIL has been a, a little troubling for me personally. I just, I, I thought NIL was about um, monetizing what you have accomplished. You know, yeah. it's like you've accomplished something as a player where you're playing at. And so now you can monetize your NIL. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's great. You know, mm -hmm. Mondo Baycott is a great example of that. He had sure. a this year, North Carolina, and he's, it looks like to me he's taking advantage of, of the things that he accomplished. The problem is that it's become pay for play and recruiting. And I don't like that. Um, I, I don't, cool. first of all, those guys, just high school players, really, they've kind of had a good high school career, but they haven't accomplished anything in college yet. And right. I don't, I don't really think that's what it was truly supposed to be about, but it is. Mm -hmm. So we have to deal with it because um, I don't see it changing. Uh, the genie's out of the bottle, and that's going to be tough to put the genie back in. The NCAA doesn't seem interested in doing anything about it. And I mean, I'm sure Congress has a few more things to worry about than NIL. And so um, it is either, again, you have to you know find ways to adapt to your to your team or your institution. At this point, I don't have anybody on my team that was recruited that way. Um, but that could change, you know, depending on what we do. You know, that's mm -hmm. an institutional decision. And, again, understand this. I'm not blaming anybody for doing it. it it's sure it, These are the rules. And it's like people ask me about it, what do you think? Well, I didn't make up the rule. You know, mm -hmm. I, it doesn't matter what I think. You know, and, and when it comes to how, you know, some of these players, what they're getting, well, the market is the market. I didn't set the market, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it doesn't really matter what, how I feel about it. It's, it, it's, a, it's part of it and it's not going to change. And so mm -hmm. I, I understand. I don't have a problem adapting to new things. It's just, you know, institutionally, we have to make that decision. And so that's kind of where it's at. Coach C Forbes, ladies and gentlemen, back on marching to madness coach. It's great to see you. Great to see you. I'm just glad you're smiling and yeah. uh, you're awake. That's a good thing. Awake. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah got to got to stay there. <laughs> right, but uh, great to have you. Uh, are you having me on this? And I uh, look forward to doing it again. Certainly, and thank you. And I'll see you this season. All right, bud. Give me good.